It took me years to get comfortable with my boobs. But I was always taught, do not do anything that will make men be attracted to you. It took me a long time to realize it was not my responsibility to adjust my freedom in order to make you comfortable. It's probably why I'm like, woo, freedom, you know. How do you feel right now? I'm so honored to be here. I've been a fan of this series for, you know, the last couple of years. I've always been like, I want to do this. Mm -hmm. This is powerful. This is meaningful. This is different. And this is important. I'm not really nervous. I mean, I will say like when I was watching some of the interviews, I was like, oh, what should I show up in? Like, what is this saying about me now? What da, da, da. So I did have a lot of those questions and I'm just gonna stay present. This is a good muscle for me to exercise. Stay present. So can you talk a little bit about what you think your style says about you? It's about the spirit. Sometimes the spirit is dressed up like this. Sometimes the spirit is no clothes. This outfit, it says like honoring the uniform, the people who have been of service, like my parents. It says swag, sexiness, like so sexy. And it says pushing back against gender norms. Who I am is sort of like a mirror like I'm mirroring back what you think about yourself. I'm mirroring back your discomforts. I'm mirroring back where you are in your freedom journey, where you are in your identity journey. It is my spirit that I celebrate. That spirit, that light, it did not dim itself for those who didn't understand it. It shined and it's still shining. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's still shining. Mm -hmm. yeah. And is there a reason that you chose like to wear this today? If you have, have followed me as an artist, then you would know that these are the first shoes that I wear when I was defining my uniform wearing the suit. And I always keep a pair of these just to remind me of when I decided to honor my own agency and to push back against societal pressures to look a certain way. I wanted to honor these shoes. I wanted to honor this look. I wanted to honor this version of myself today. Mm -hmm. I wanted to celebrate them. I wanted to, I want to, ah. Uh. I want to honor them. I want to honor her. I want to honor me at every stage. And so this was a stage that I hadn't seen in a minute. And I wanted, I wanted to take them with me. Could you talk a little bit about the assumptions that people make about you based on how you look? It depends on sort of who you ask. Like if you ask my friends, they're gonna be like, she's a nudist every vacation we're on. Breasts are out, she's running around, you know. Um, I think there were folks who used this suit as a way to shame other individuals, specifically women, black women, who may not have been as covered up in a, in a suit. I've had to make sure when a person complimented me and in the same sentence said, oh yeah, I'm so happy you're covered up, you're not like those women, I never took that as a compliment. I've had to make sure to check people mm -hmm. and let them know, no, 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 no. We will not do that. And a part of me sort of, I started to shed wearing this. On the flip side of that though, I remember also there being women who were styling, being like, why don't you just wear a dress? You're a new artist, you're hot. I clinged more to it because I was like, no. I'm honoring me and, I, and also I want to bring a new perspective. I want to show that whether I show skin or I don't, I'm sexy. 
I just always felt like people would try their best to take my autonomy away from me. And once I started to understand patriarchy, once I started to understand misogyny, the way in which these individuals have tried to keep us internally fighting each other and fighting for respect. Once I understood that, you know, something clicked. You know, as I'm honoring who I am now and expressing myself, pulling all of me together, I have definitely heard things like, oh, you want attention. Look at her now. You know, mind you, they haven't been following anything that I've been doing, because if you know, you, you've seen the evolution. You've seen me honoring so many different parts of who I am over the years. What do you want to do next? Let's take off the jacket. Okay. Great. All right. So what's the biggest insecurity that you have worked on overcoming or you're working on overcoming? Well, it's interesting that you said take off your jacket because it's these, my boobies, my boobies. <laughs> I remember when I first started to wear my tuxedo, my breasts were not this big. They were smaller with, you know, time. I started to get more curvy. My old shirts didn't work. I had to change my wardrobe. And I was just really uncomfortable. And also like my friends would comment on them, but they would always give me compliments like, oh, you have the best boobies. Oh, if I get a boob job, I'm taking pictures of your boobs. And you would think like, I should be like, yes, ooh. But I was very uncomfortable with the change that was happening. Like it took me years to get comfortable with my boobs. It's probably why I'm like, woo! Free them, you know. Um, I can only imagine the horror stories that happened to my ancestors. But I was always taught, do not do anything that will make men be attracted to you. It took me a long time to realize it was not my responsibility to adjust my freedom in order to make you comfortable, in order to make you not try and rape or molest me. I am having an earth experience where I'm expressing myself. I'm trying to honor my body, honor my fullness. I'm not asking for your attention. I should not be made to feel bad or be shamed because you cannot control your own urges. I had to free my own mind of what, at that time, what I felt like masculine androgynous energy looks like. I was living in my own binary. And I was like, there's no way that I can be androgynous with bigger boobs now. How I feel inside is the thing that I needed to, to work through. My music and my image ascends when I ascend. When I go to a more evolved version of who I am, that reflects in the music, it's not the other way around. So if I'm hiding or if I'm giving you clues about me being queer but not really saying it, I'm still on my journey. I think that I was non-binary a long time ago. I just did not have the language for it. Mm -hmm. I say energy now. I used to do masculine, feminine, but I just sort of use water and rock mm -hmm. as the mm -hmm. sort of elements. Mm -hmm. More like water, more like rock, you know. One. Saying and identifying with being non-binary mm -hmm. helped free me a lot. What would you say has been your biggest struggle? I'm always thinking about what's next. I want to be content with just right here and right now. When I'm not present, when I'm with my family, mm -hmm. I have an immense amount of guilt. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm thinking about ideas and how I'm gonna do this or how I'm gonna do this next role and I'm with my family and we're eating dinner and I'm only gonna see them for four days and I wasn't present, I've walked away from those trips feeling really guilty and spiraling. Mm -hmm. God forbid anything happened to them, you know? The, how dare I? Yeah, I just didn't know how to turn my brain off from creating my art and being present with my mom who just wants to watch a movie with me or cook dinner or wash my hair. My mom loves doing mom things. Whenever I can, I try my best to carve out spaces that have nothing to do with who I am as sort of artist, but more so who I am as a daughter who I am as a sister, who I am as a friend, 
because these are these are relationships that do matter to me and none of this means the same if my family's not here to experience mm -hmm. it to share my joy mm -hmm. i think a lot of those moments happen especially early on i'm trying to figure things out i'm trying to be perfect because public embarrassment is also a fear of mine it used to be i do not want to be one of those people trending for the wrong reason and every now and again i have to catch myself and say i know my heart I'm not above making mistakes. I can apologize. I can move on. And I give myself grace. I'm not gonna give grace to somebody else and not give my own self that grace. When was the last time you cried? Besides here. Besides here, right. <laughs> um, yesterday, mm -hmm. in the bed, listening to God Only Knows. I may not always love you. That mm -hmm. line, wow. It just, it touched me. It, it made me not think about like another person. God Only Knows where I'd be without you, would I be without you. It made me think about me too my relationship with myself, especially I was, as I was preparing to come here today. Mm -hmm. These are tears of joy. These are tears that celebrate the work that I have done to love all of me. Not some of me, but all of me. At every evolution, at every turn, my relationship with me is deeply important because I know what it feels like to not love. I've experienced self-hate, not appreciating my body, depression, anxiety, trauma. I know that, like the back of my hand. But when you experience peace within, there's no going back and you protect, and I protect that by any means. I owe that to me and I don't seek that from anybody else. When do you feel the most beautiful? When I'm listening to a wonderful, beautiful score, arrangement, there's certain chord progressions and changes that make me just feel like, wow, so much beauty around me and through me. That's why I love, love doing music and being a part of it. I also feel beautiful when my friends hype me up, you know, when we're dancing or whatever, and they're like, yes, get it, you know, like really, helping me to feel myself and to tap into my sensuality a little more, starting to feel like beauty there mm -hmm. and power and like a closeness with God. When I'm with the people that I love and I know they love me, I feel beauty. Sure. Yes. When do you feel the most pleasure? Watching other people have a good time. Like if I have an event or a gathering, I wanna know that everybody's having a good time and I'll just kind of like have my little drink and I'm like, mm hmm And knowing that I'm not really needed for that moment, I don't know, I just like it. Why? Because I think that I'm always curating experiences. Like if I'm on stage and it takes a lot of energy, <laughs> quite frankly, <laughs> to do that all the time. And I love when people just own the space. Cause sometimes I wanna have room to just be. And sometimes people have expectations around what is it gonna be like to meet her, you know? And they feel let down when that sort of narrative, the moment that they cooked up in their head isn't mm. the moment that they left with. It's a big expectation. You feel you have to perform. Mm. And again, I'm having an earth experience. Sometimes I want to be quiet. Sometimes I don't have anything to say. Profound. Sometimes mm -hmm. I want to feel free to mm -hmm. let my underarm hair hang low and just be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me take off the hands.
What do you love the most about your body? I love my skin. It's very soft. Like I can just like, mm, like it's soothing. I do this a lot just to sort of soothe myself. Um, and I love my stretch marks. When I was getting stretch marks as a teen, I used to be really self-conscious of them. I mean, going swimming was like hell for me. I was like, oh my God, everybody's looking at my stretch marks. I sort of like them now. And when I see them on other bodies, specifically here, it, it's really sexy. So I like my little stretch marks. Why in your body, in your skin, in your journey, why is it a good place to be? It is a great, amazing place to be in my body because of the way that I love on it. We are reclaiming ourselves. We are using the best vibrators. Mm -hmm. We're having the best sex. We're eating the best food. I've apologized to my body, to my cells. I've let my body know that it's us. We have the autonomy and I won't betray you. I will not betray my body. I won't betray me for anybody. I may have betrayed us before, but not again. Right. Not again. Not again. That was really, really, really beautiful. Thank you. How do you feel right now? I'm happy to be able to appreciate me in all of my fullness. Like I'm a rituals person, so a ritualistic person. So this was a ritual to mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. to be able to honor all of me, mm -hmm. to honor all of me, mm -hmm. all of me, all of me, all of me, all of me. Yeah, to honor all of me publicly. I do it privately, but to do it publicly and to do it in this way with you guys is very special. Yeah. 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 We're so excited to have Dipsy, the app where storytelling meets sexual wellness, on board as our sponsor of this episode of What's Underneath. Every time I interview someone for What's Underneath, it gives me a chance to reconnect with my body and check in with where I might need to be honoring myself more. Dipsy's sexy audio stories grant me that same opportunity to check in with myself and my body and my desires shame-free. Radically inclusive, Dipsy has stories for straight and queer listeners, and over 50% of their stories are voice acted by people of color. Dipsy also has soothing sleep stories, wellness sessions led by experts, and sexy stories that you can read. For our Style Like You community, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash style like you. That's D-I-P-S-E-A stories dot com slash style like you. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode of What's Underneath with Janelle Monet. And if you like this episode and want to see more episodes like this, please subscribe to Style Like You. And don't forget to click the bell so that you're reminded of every time we drop a new episode.